So team, keep it clean. We are here to share our post-game thoughts from the game that we all watch. And we had to drop this one a day early because this game, it, every Ravens game is special, but this game was a different kind of special. Because, and somebody just sent this to me. They said, you know how many times in recent years that Ravens would have lost a game like that? And, and, and there were several obstacles put in their way and several obstacles that the Baltimore Ravens put in their own way that they had to end up overcoming to get that victory. And it was just a beautiful thing to watch. I loved it. I loved it. The game started off with the Rams. Uh, Rams had, no, Ravens got the ball first. Ravens got the ball first. They executed five plays. Uh, and they did get a first down, but then they ended up getting stopped on third and short. I thought they may go for it, but they punted the ball. And a lot of times during this game, they were playing like they were, they were playing the long game because they were like, no, we're not going to go for it on the fourth down. There was a couple of fourth and shorts where I really thought they were going to go for it, but they didn't. They punted, and it obviously ended up working out uh, in the long run. But so the Ravens got the ball first, and they ended up punting. They didn't score, and then the Rams literally from – not end zone to end zone, but from one side of the field to the other, they literally ran straight down the Ravens. Like, they were just running every single play. Ravens could not stop them. They did not stop them. Rams just kept running, 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 running. And then, all of a sudden, Rams get a first and goal, and they decide to throw out what's working. They're like, you know what? We're running the ball so well. Let's do the exact opposite. So they pass the ball, didn't get a touchdown, end up um, having to settle for a field goal. And I'm like, what What kind of, what in the Ravens is going on? Because we've we seen the Ravens do that stuff plenty of times over the years. But to see a team do it to the Ravens, it was just really weird. Um, but then the Ravens, they ended up eventually responding back. Uh, and this game, I think with, um, we ain't got to go drive by drive, but this game, Lamar early on. And, and, and throughout a couple more times, too, he did miss on some deep passes. Uh, early on in the first quarter, he missed on a deep pass to Rashad Bateman, uh, and he also missed on a deep pass to Zay Flowers. And both times, they, both guys had a step on the defender. Um, Zay Flowers, he was running toward the sideline, and Lamar didn't hit him, and, and Rashad Bateman was just running up the field, and Lamar overthrew him. Uh, but my thing, I was thinking, and I said it too, and, and we've said this over the years, like people will say, all right, Lamar can't hit on the deep ball. He's so inconsistent with the deep ball. And while that, that is true, he, he can be inconsistent with the deep ball. I, I disagree with that. He can't hit on the deep ball, but he can be inconsistent with it. But it does not help, in my opinion, it doesn't help build consistency. If you throw two deep balls early in the game and you don't hit on them, and then y'all just stop throwing deep balls completely. I, I, I just would hate to see when the Ravens would do stuff like that. Uh, but this game, I was so happy that they didn't do that. They didn't do it because Lamar missed some early. And then he hit a couple. He hit Isaiah Likely. Uh, well, Isaiah Likely was wide open, ran for the touchdown. He hit Odell Beckham Jr., who we knew this was going to be a really big game for. We knew this was going to be a huge game for Odell Beckham Jr., and it certainly was. Um, but he, he hit Odell Beckham Jr. on that deep ball um, for the touchdown. And then later on, he, he missed some more. He, he missed some more, but Lamar Jackson, after he threw, oh, that interception, the interception to, for Rashad Bateman, that was a deep ball. But, again, I, I love that they kept trying, even after he threw the interception, which was a bad interception, because he, it, uh, he threw, it wasn't short, but, well, I get, no, it was a little short, because Rashad Bateman turned around and he, had, he was waiting for the ball to come to him instead of like, just being able to run and go get it. Uh, so it was a little bit short, but um, the defender, he made a great play. He made a great play. Like Rashad Bateman, he had his arms open waiting for the ball, and the defender was like, nah, I don't know what you're waiting for. I'm taking this, and he, he took it. But um, to see Lamar, even after that interception, to see him still attempt the deep balls after that, I love that. Now, Lamar Jackson throughout different times of this game, a lot of people said, oh, yeah, he ain't clutch. He ain't this, he ain't that. And, and I remember when toward the very end of the game, I, I saw somebody say, oh, this is what usually where uh, Lamar is good for uh, getting strip sacked or fumbling the game away or throwing a pick. And he didn't do that. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they needed a touchdown because the Rams, I want to say, were up five, I believe. Uh, and they needed a touchdown. And see, this, this is where it got tricky because Lamar Jackson, they, it was third and uh, I think it was third and seven, I think. Uh, but then there was a penalty. I forgot what the penalty was, but the penalty moved them back, and it made it third and 17, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm thinking, oh, boy, this is a drive that we have to get a touchdown. Ain't no field goals. It was already third and long, and it's third down, so we only got two more downs to get it. So it's already third and long. It was already third and long, but now it's third and longer. I'm like, oh, man. oh no. It, it, was the, it wasn't the penalty. It was the sack. 
they called it a sack. I thought both his knees were still up, but they called it a sack. Well, Lamar, he he got he got his ankles got grabbed, and then he pushed the ball forward, and um, it was incomplete. Well, the first they called it an incomplete, but then they called it a sack. So that's what it was. So that pushed the, the Ravens back. Um, but to to be third and seventeen, like people who say Lamar don't got the clutch factor, I just I, I never got that. Because we've even seen it. We've seen sometimes where Lamar, it, would, it ends up being a strip sack in some of those situations. But we also seen, um, and, and I remember in a Giants game where he threw that pick. And that was, mm, yeah. But we've also seen a lot of games where Lamar has gotten the points that the Baltimore Ravens needed. He's gotten them to where they need to be. And the defense, they would end up giving something up. So then people would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, Lamar ain't got that clutch factor. But uh, in, in this game, this was a game where... Throughout different points of the game, both sides had to bail each other out. But definitely, this was a game where the offense had to bail the defense out. Both sides definitely contributed, though, for sure. They definitely contributed in a big way. Um, but the offense had to come through. They were sleeping early on, but then they started waking up, and they ended up making it happen, overtime and all. But that third and 17, to have a third and 17 and throw that deep pass and, and, and hit Zay Flowers for the touchdown, man. It don't get no better than that. I mean, we wish they, they would have put it away a little early, but that was just amazing to see. So great play from Lamar. Great play from Zay Flowers. And then right they went right back to him on a two-point conversion. Big trust. It literally is big trust for Zay Flowers. So they went right back to him on a two-point conversion, and they converted. And I, I love it. And I talked about this during the stream. Lamar Jackson this year, he, he's gone to another level because – he, uh, he, he, gives, he continues to give receivers a chance. If a receiver messes up, like Zay Flowers had a couple of drops in this game. But he made, did, did make some nice plays throughout this game too. But he had those drops. So there will be years past with Lamar. So if somebody was dropping the ball, if they weren't making good plays, Lamar would go away from them. He wouldn't keep going back to them. But now this year, he keep, if somebody drops a pass, he'd go right back to him. He'd go right back to him. I think Lamar probably like, well, I do got some overthrows myself. So let me go. Let me, let, me, let me build my trust with these guys. But I, I love that that he keeps giving his guys opportunities. Um, the running game in this game. Oof. <laughs> Early in the, in the first half, they weren't running the ball at all. Then the second half, they, they started running the ball. Uh, Keaton Mitchell made some really nice runs, catch after the runs. I mean, run after the catch. And he was just, he's an amazing player. Um, so shout out to Keaton Mitchell. Gus Edwards, he was used a little bit. You know, let, 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 let's, let's look at the numbers. Um, of course, Lamar Jackson, 24 for 43, 316, uh, three touchdowns and a pick. Uh, we talked about that. Then he got sacked twice. Um, but he also led the league in, I mean, led the game in carries. He, I mean, led the Ravens in yards on the ground. He had 70 yards, 11 carries and 70 yards. Uh, and he showed us on some of the runs like, oh, oh, yeah, he definitely still got it. Keaton Mitchell had nine carries for 54 yards. Gus Edwards had six carries for 15 yards. So they were not really running the ball too much. This was a definitely a big-time passing game for sure. Um, but I believe they still had more rushing yards than the Rams. And that was crazy, especially how that first drive went. And I really like with Kyron Williams on the Rams, the Rams running back, I feel like every time he touched the ball, he was going way forward. Odell Beckham Jr., we figured that this would be a big game for him because the Ravens, they like really letting their guys go off. If they used to play for a previous team, they like, like letting those guys go off against that previous team. He had four catches for 97 yards and a touchdown. Odell Beckham Jr. made some clutch catches, two clutch, clutch catches. Uh, Isaiah Likely, five catches for 83 yards and a touchdown. So he came up. He even had a drop. But, again, Keep going back to them. They gonna drop the ball. Stuff happens. It is what it is. Zay Flowers, he made plenty of plays. Obviously, we just talked about it. Nelson Aguilar, he was coming on strong toward the end of the game more. So, shout out to Nelson Aguilar. And Rashad Bateman had two catches for 24 yards. So, that was a uh, beautiful, 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 beautiful game. Um, it could have been better for the offense. But it could have been a lot better for the defense. And the defense, oh, man. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, this was a terrible game for Marlon Humphrey. And I've seen people say, oh, it was Marlon Humphrey's first game back from injury. He was rusty. And while all that is true, it was still a terrible game for Marlon Humphrey. It, it, it really was. Uh, there was a play when the, the ball, the, the, the pass catcher caught the ball, I forgot who caught it. And Marlon Humphrey was just like walking around, looking around. I, I, I guess I, I don't know what was happening on that play. But then he finally turned around and that was that. There was a play where he, he did slip. If somebody slipped, okay, that ain't, that ain't necessarily a bad play on their part. They just slip. It happens. But then the, the play right after he slipped. Cooper Cup caught it all over him and, and made a big conversion and whatnot. And then at, shortly after that, Marlon Humphrey was looking like he was getting ready to end the game. I was like, oh, let's go. And I was jumping up and down celebrating, but it was an incomplete pass. So still a good play by Marlon Humphrey on that one. But um, I know there's something that I was – oh, yeah, he was getting beat by Demarcus Robinson too. Like this was a bad game for Marlon Humphrey all around. Um, Kyle Hamilton, uh, hopefully he's – I think he'll be straight. But he left the game. And my guy Samuel Njoku, he made a good point. He said this Ravens defense is different without Kyle Hamilton. And it certainly is. 
It really is. This defense was very shaky throughout different times of this game. Um, shout out to Matt Abike, though, getting a sack. Shout out to Travis Jones getting a sack. But Matthew Stafford, he dealt with the pressure really good this game. Um, and not every throw that he made while under pressure was completed, but he was putting it where his receivers could get it. He did have uh, quite a few drops on their end, too. Looking at Matthew Stafford's numbers, 23 for 41, 294 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Only got sacked two times. So he, he had a pretty good game against the Baltimore Ravens. And then Kyron Williams, 25 carries, 114 yards, 4.6 yards per carry. So he was doing his thing. Now, Cooper Cup, <laughs> beast. Beast. Uh, now, Ravens, they had some, some lapses on defense. I don't know what was going on. This was not Mike McDonald's best day of the season. Um, where Cooper Cup would be one-on-one. -on -one, Cooper Cup would be wide open. Puka would be wide open. That tight end would be wide open. Guys would be wide open. And the matchup, the, there was some matchup issues, too. There was a time where uh, Cooper Cup was matched up one-on-one -on -one with Marcus Williams. It was like, ooh, yikes. That was a big mistake. But And Ravens paid for it. Uh, well, Cooper Cup had eight for 115 and a touchdown. Puka had five for 84 yards. Uh, Davis Allen. He had a touchdown. Demarcus Robinson, he had a touchdown. Now, speaking of that Demarcus Robinson touchdown, that might have been Harbaugh's worst challenge of his entire career. John Harbaugh challenged a play, said that the receiver stepped out of bounds, um, but it was not even close to stepping out of bounds. I just did not get that at all. That was just a terrible, terrible decision. But thank goodness the Ravens didn't end up paying for it in the end. Uh, and then fast forward into the end. Baltimore Ravens defense came through in overtime because they got the ball first. They went three and out. Rams got the ball. Ravens defense stopped them. Then Ravens uh, on the punt return, man. On the punt return, Tylen Wallace, man. The fact that he caught the ball, made a guy miss, and then he even stumbled. He stumbles. I was thinking, oh, boy, he about to go down. But he caught his balance, ran it back for the uh, punt return for a touchdown, and it was a beautiful thing. That was such a beautiful way to end this game. Such a beautiful way because I thought, all right, well, Ravens, you could, you could get a field goal and you could end it, but – he was like, no, 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 offense, you stay, stay on the sideline. Y'all done done enough. Y'all need a break. Y'all need a break. Because there were times where it felt like the offense and defense, they were still on the bye week. But Tyler Wallace said, oh, yeah, that, that job is mine now. So Devin Duvernay, I'm not sure what his injury was. I, don't, I think somebody said it was a back injury, I, I think, I, but I'm not sure what it is, so I, I can't speak on it. But Devin Duvernay is officially not the punt return man anymore, not after today. That's Tyler Wallace's job for sure. Um, just to go back and forth a bit, the offensive line, Ronnie Stanley had left the game. I'm not sure what happened with him because they had Patrick McCarty out there. There were times where Daniel Falele was out there. I, so I don't know what was going on with the offensive line. I was clueless. Tyler Linderbaum, oh, my goodness, that play uh, with the safety. Lamar was putting somebody in motion. He didn't, was not calling for the ball. Tyler Linderbaum snapped it, and that thing went flying. But Lamar made a really smart play on that play by kicking the ball out of bounds because it was a rainy game. It was a wet game, and I did not think the numbers would be like that. Like, for, especially for, I thought it was going to be a big game on the ground for the Ravens. They said, nope. Um, but Lamar Jackson, instead of try to, trying to pick up the ball, he just kicked it out of bounds. Because had he picked up the ball and dropped it and the Rams recovered it, that's touchdown. So that was a smart, quick, heads-up play by Lamar Jackson. And I'm so glad, like, that little play is here that changed everything. It's, football is a game of inches, as we know. But there was that play, plays like that. There was... um. The punt where the Rams punted it, but then they said the Ravens were offsides. They went to commercial break after Rams punt. They didn't see no flags or nothing, but then they came back and they let, oh, Ravens were offsides. Rams first down. They end up getting a touchdown off of that. There was another play. I want to say it was in overtime. It was either, either in fourth quarter or overtime where they called defensive pass interference on Marlon Humphrey. It was a terrible call. It was a non-catchable ball. And both Marlon Humphrey and I think Puka, they got their, their legs tangled up, and they ended up calling pass interference. It was just a really bad call. But there was some really bad calls in this one, some – Ugly calls in this one. Um, then there were some good no calls, too. Uh, but, yeah, this was a crazy game. It was a good game, though. Good game, good game. Uh, it was good no calls on both sides at different points of the game. This was a crazy game, though. But like we mentioned at the beginning where somebody told it, like, Ravens, there's a lot of times Ravens would have lost that game. But the fact that they didn't this time, that says a lot about exactly who this team is and where they can go.